اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah the beneficent the merciful Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen All praise and the praise of every act of goodness belongs to Allah the Lord the sustainer and the cherisher of the whole universe Wassalatu wassalamu ala khayri halikillahi muhammad May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon the Holy Prophet Muhammad and his purified Al Al Bayt. Brothers and sisters in Islam, I greet you with the best of greetings, saying Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As we all know that we are in the blessed month of Rabi'ul Awwal. The month of the birth of the noble prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam. According to the noble Quran in Surah to Maryam, verse 15 and verse 33, Allah subhanahu wa taala recognizes and sends special salam, special blessing upon Prophet Yahya and Prophet Isa on their respective birthday, the day of their death. And the day they will be resurrected. Regarding Prophet Yahya, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wassalamun alayhi, and peace on him, yawma wulida, on the day he was born. Wa yawma yamutu, and on the day he dies, wa yawma yubahathu hayyan, and on the day he is raised to life. And regarding Prophet Isa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala via the tongue of Nabi Isa says Wassalamu alayya and peace on me yawma wulidtu on the day I was born wa yawma amutu and on the day I die wa yawma uba'asu hayyan and on the day I am raised back to life This simply indicates and confer the fact that the day of birth the day of death and the day of rising up, rising back to life are special days before Allah. And it is Allah's sunnah to send special salam, special blessings upon his prophets on those days. Therefore, upon the noble prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, we say, Assalamu ala Rasulillah. Aminullahi ala wahihi wa azahimi lihamrihi ala khatimu lima sabak wal fatihu lima stukbil wal mu'ayminu ala dhalika kullihi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Now, just like every controversial issue in Islam among the scholars and students alike Celebration of the noble prophet's birth has also generated a lot of controversy whereby a group of the Muslim are of the opinion that it is allowed and it is necessary to celebrate Mawlid al-Nabi. On the other hand, the opposing group is of the view that it is bidia, that is innovation, that it is bidia to celebrate Mawlid al-Nabi. This controversy has been there for ages. However, as students of learning and followers of Islam, it is imperative to objectively examine and understand the view of each opposing views. Then, insha'Allah ta'ala, along the line, in the course of our lecture, we shall establish the permissibility and validity of celebrating Mawlid in Nabi. Number one, those who oppose Mawlid in Nabi celebration, they say, Al-Ittifalu 
بمولد سيدنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه واله وسلم بدعه that is to celebrate the birth of the holy prophet muhammad is bidia innovation on the other hand those who support and claim that it is permissible and it is necessary to celebrate the birth of the holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam they ask a very simple question that the wilada of the holy prophet that is the birth of the holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam is it a favor or a cause is it a mercy or a cause and alhamdulillah even those who oppose celebrating the birth of the prophet they all answered that it is favor from allah the birth of the prophet is a favor from allah question how is the birth of the holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam and how is the prophet himself a nihma favor according to the holy quran in surah al-anbiya verse 107 allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ba'da'udu billahi minash shaitanir rajim wa ma arsalnaka illa rahmatan lil alamin and we have not sent you O Muhammad but as a mercy to the O universe so according to this verse the holy prophet is a mercy to the entire universe in surah ali imran verse 164 allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us how the noble prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam was a benefit is a benefit and will continue to be benefit for the believers specifically a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim allah says laqad manna allah ala al mu'minin certainly allah conferred a benefit upon the believers meaning the holy prophet muhammad is was and will continue to be benefit ala al-mu'minin upon the believers how id ba'asa fihim rasulan min anfusihim when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised among the believer raised among them an apostle from among themselves yatlu alayhim ayati reciting to them is verses is communications wa yuzakkihim and purifying them wa yuallimuhum alkitab wal hikmah and teaching them the book and the wisdom wa in kanu and before that that is before the birth of the prophet before the appointment of the prophet as a prophet before the arrival of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam wa in kanu min qablu before that la fi dalalin mubin they were surely in manifest error you and i our fathers our forefathers we were all in manifest error but the arrival of the holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam simply lift us from the pit of darkness from the pit of ignorance from the pit of misguidance into light insha allah at an appropriate time we we'll still go back to this verse so therefore if all the muslims irrespective of our sect irrespective of our ideology if we all agreed that the noble prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam is arrival is birth is a mercy a favor and a benefit from allah then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah's instruction on how we should treat his mercy and favor on us is that one in surah duha verse 11 allah says wa amma bi ni'mati rabbika fahaddis 
and as for the favor of your Lord, do announce it. Announce the favor that Allah has done to you. Proclaim it. Speak it out. In Surah to Yunus, verse 58, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kul, O Prophet, tell them, tell the believers, Bifadlillahi, in the grace of Allah, wa bi rahmatihi, and in the mercy of Allah, fa bidalika, in that, falayafurahu, falayafurahu, they should rejoice, they should celebrate, wa khayrun, it is better, mimma yajma'un, than that which they gather frivolously. So, these noble verses established the fact that to announce and to rejoice the birthday of the noble prophet, which we all agree to be mercy and favor, can never be be there. Rather, it is a direct instruction of Allah, as we shall further proven, insha'Allah. Question. How did the Sahaba understood these verses, these beautiful verses, that the noble prophet is a benefit, manna is a benefit to the believers? Insha'Allah, at an appropriate time, we shall recite for us a beautiful hadith to see what the Sahaba did among themselves. Question. What are the arguments of those who oppose Mawlid in Nabi celebrations? The antagonists of Mawlid in Nabi, they only present one argument. Although sometimes they, they color their single argument in different coloration. But it still remains one point fundamentally. This fundamental argument of the antagonist of Mawlid al Nabi is that the noble Prophet ﷺ did not instruct us to celebrate his Mawlid. And he himself did not practice it. And the Sahaba did not practice it after his demise. Therefore, they concluded it is bidia for us to do that. Like I said, they also put many coloration to this fundamental point. For example, one, they will say, Prophet said we should not emulate the Jews and the Christians. And it is the Jew and the Christians that celebrate the birthday of their Prophet. Therefore, why are we celebrating the birthday of our Prophet? Number two, they will also say, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam forbid us to overpraise him like the Jews and the Christians have overpraised their prophets. And number three, this also bring another, though that particular argument is out of line, but at least they used to bring it. They say, the fact that there is no agreement to the exact day, that is, there is no agreement to the exact date of the birth of the Prophet. Some are of the opinion that Prophet was born on the 12th, while some claim he was born on the 17th. So therefore, how are you doing something you even divided among yourselves? So this are the these are other coloration of the main point of Mawlid in Nabi's uh, antagonist. Insha'Allah, we shall take it one after the other, but I, take it, uh, I think it is better that I respond to these antagonistic points from uh, below upward, since the three sub-points holds no water. First, they say there is no agreement to the exact date of the birth of the noble prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sallam. And we say how exactly is that a reasonable point to declare celebrating Mawlid in Nabi Abidia? Question. 
do the entire Muslims abandon Salat because we do not agree on many things in it. For example, some recite Basmala, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim aloud. They recite Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim loudly before they start Surah Al Fatiha. Why? Because they believe that Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim is verse one of Surah Al Fatiha. And others, for example, like the Salafiyas, they recite Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim silently. They now recite Surah Al Fatiha loudly. Why? They believe that Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim is not a part of Surah Al Fatiha. Or should we talk about Qabd and Sadal to mention but a few? Some said to fold your arms in Salat is necessary. Therefore, they said we should fold our hands in Salat. Others say no, lose your arms in Salat. Do not fold it. And interestingly, interestingly, even those who said fold your arms in Salat, they are also divided among themselves. Some say put your hands on your chest. Some say no, put your hands on your belly button. And the last group said no, put your hand between the chest and the belly button. Question. Do Muslims abandon Salat because of these controversies? Absolutely no. So, why is the hypocrisy that Maulid in Nabi celebration should be abandoned because Muslims do not agree on the exact date that the Prophet was born. Why the hypocrisy? Number two, the antagonist, they said, Prophet instructed us not to overpraise him like the Jews and the Christians overpraised their Prophet. Again, our question is, how exactly is celebrating the birth? Of the noble prophet equate to overpraising him like the Jews and the Christians have overpraised their prophet. How exactly? Has any Muslim, has any Muslim ever referred to the noble prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as son of Allah or as God? Absolutely no. And that is how. The Jew and the Christians overpraised their prophet. So, why these exaggerations and desperation, all in the name to, ex to oppose Maulid in Nabi's celebration? We'll see that this point is also null and void. Number three, the antagonists also say, Prophet instructed us not to follow the Jews and the Christians in their practices. And it is those two, that is the Jew and the Christian, it is they who used to celebrate the birthday of their prophet. Our response to them is that if this point is valid, then why do they believe why do they believe that the noble prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that the noble prophet himself followed the Jew and the Christian in their practice by fasting on the day of Ashura. Wow. These people, they believe in certain hadith. Their hadith said, Prophet arrived in Medina and he saw the Jews fasting and upon his inquiry, the Jews said, today is the day of Ashura. The day that Allah saved Musa and the children of Israel from Fir'aun. Therefore, they used to fast on that day to mark that blessing. Then according to this hadith, Prophet ordered the Sahaba to fast after saying, Musa is closer to me than you. And Prophet himself fasted that day according to that hadith. 
Interestingly, interestingly, in another hadith, some of the Sahaba ask the Prophet, O oh Allah's Messenger, why should we be emulating the Jews and the Christians? Why should we be following them? And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was allegedly said, we need to differentiate ourselves from the Jew. They fast on Ashura, 10th of Muharram. So we are going to differentiate ourselves from them by fasting on the 9th of Ashura and on the 10th of Ashura in the month of Muharram. Sorry, on the 9th and on the 10th of Muharram in the month of Muharram. That is Tasua and Ashura. This Adia Hadith this are their hadith, which they believe 100%, despite several contradictions and inconsistencies in this ahadith. The point is that this ahadith established that there is no problem to follow the Jews and the Christians if their sunnah is good. But we need to simply differentiate our practices from theirs. Therefore, using such argument to oppose Maulid in Nabi is null and void. Their last point, which is the main fundamental point, they said, since the Prophet did not instruct us or Practice Maulid in Nabi himself, and the Sahaba after him did not also practice it. Therefore, it is tantamount to Bidya if we practice it. Our response to them is that first, if this is a valid point, then why do they, that is the antagonists of Maulid in Nabi, why do they always, often practice? what the prophet and his sahaba never ever practice for example to say radiyallahu anhu when we mention a sahaba or radiyallahu anhum when we mention group of sahaba or to say rahimahullah when a dead righteous muslim is mentioned Despite the fact that the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam read it in the Quran, the point is that he did not instruct anybody. He did not command anybody. Or he himself never practiced it the way it is being done today. That the moment you mention a Sahabi, you should say, Radi Allah Anu. Or if you mention them as a group, you, sh you should say, Radiyallahu anihum ajma'in. Or if you mention a dead scholar or a righteous Muslim, you, sh you say, Rahimahullah. Prophet never instructs us to do this. He himself did not practice it the way we are doing it today. So, why the hypocrisy? Why can't they abandon that practice and classify it as bidya on the core either on the law they formulated that if prophet did not instruct or did not do something we should not do it. We only use deductive arguments to validate the way we use Radi Allah anihu. And Rahimahullah today. We only use deductive argument to, val to, validate it, to validate it. It is not that there is a clear and straightforward directive from the Prophet. That we should do it the way we are doing it today. That is a new practice. Question. Can we establish new things and practices? That Allah and His Messenger never mentioned at all. Can we establish new things and practices in Islam? 
whereby Allah did not mention it, whereby the Prophet did not instruct us, whereby the Prophet did not practice it? The answer is yes. If that practice is good, and if that practice is of excellent intentions, and did not oppose anything in Islam. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-An'am verse uh, 160, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Man jaa bila asanati, whoever brings a good deed, Look at that word. What a beautiful word. Man jaa bila hasanati. Whoever brings a good deed, falahu ashuru amthaliha. He shall have ten reward like that good deed that he brought. Wa man jaa bisayyihati. And whoever brings an evil deed, فَلَا يُجْسَ إِلَّا مِثْلَهَا Allahu Akbar It shall be recompensed It shall be rewarded Only with the like of the evil deed that he brought وَأُمْ لَا يُزْلَمُونَ And Allah say None of them shall be dealt with unjustly This verse What is it telling us? That it is allowed That we can introduce We can bring good deed in Islam how does the Holy Prophet Muhammad interpret this verse? Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Imam Muslim, in his hadith, in his sahih, we all know this hadith. We've read it several times. Imam Muslim documents that the Holy Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, said, Man sanna fil islami sunnatan hasanatan e whoever Whoever introduced some good sunnah in Islam. Look at how Allah put his own. Whoever brings good deed. Prophets use the word sunnah here. Man sanna fil islami sunnatan hasanatan. Whoever introduced some good sunnah. Whoever introduced a good sunnah, that is a good practice in Islam. Fa'umila biha badahu. Which was followed after him. That is, people followed that good sunnah after him. Prophet says, Kutibala'u mislu ajri. He would be assured of reward like one who followed it. وَلَا يَنْكُسُ مِنْ أُجُورِهِمْ شَيْءٌ Without their rewards being diminished in any respect. And Prophet continues, صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَآلِهِ وَسَلَمْ What a beautiful hadith. وَمَنْ سَنَّ فِي الْإِسْلَامِ سُنَّةً سَيِّئَةً And whoever introduced an evil practice in Islam, فَأُمِلَ بِأَبَادَهُ which had been followed subsequently by others after him. Kutiba alayhi mislu. That person, he would be required to bear the body like that of one who followed that evil practice. Without their being diminished in any respect. So you Muslim. These are clear cut evidences from the Quran and Hadith. That... We can introduce good deed in Islam. We can introduce good sunnah in Islam. In fact, what Allah and His Messenger did not specifically mention or do is not out of forgetfulness. Rather, it is left as a blessing for us. Who said so? The Prophet himself. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Imam Darukutni in his sunnah. And of course, Imam Nawawi in his uh, popular 40 hadith. They record, they record this particular hadith that uh, the, 
the holy prophet sallallahu uh, an rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qala inna allah ta'ala farad farahid fala tudayyuha wa hadda hududan fala tahtaduha wa harrama ashya'a fala tantahikuha wa sakata an ashya'a rahmatan lakum ghayra nisyan fala tabahathu ana'a Allahu akbar The only prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam was reported to have said verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has laid down obligations He has laid down obligations so do not neglect them And Allah has set limits to certain things so do not overstep them And he has forbidden some things so do not violate them Allahu Akbar Prophet now says wa sakata an ashya'a and Allah has remained silent on certain things why rahmatan lakum so that, that those things will be blessing for you those things will be mercy for you ghayran isyan it is not as a result of forgetfulness fala tabhathu anha fala tabhathu anha That is another instruction from the prophet. So do not seek after them. Now today, when we talk about Maulid al-Nabi, should we celebrate it or not? Specifically, Allah did not mention it in the Quran. Specifically, prophet did not instruct us. Specifically, prophet did not celebrate it the way we are doing it today. Do they forget? No. What did prophet say again? Wasakata an ashya'a. Allah remains silent on certain things. Why? Rahmatan lakum so that those things will be mercy for us. Ghayran isyan. Allah did not forget. Prophet did not forget. Fala tabhasu anha. So those of you who said it is bidya, it is haram. It is not. Do not seek do not seek after them. Another beautiful verse from the Holy Quran where Allah instructs us is in Surah Al-Fatih verse 9. Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala says, "Ba'dhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim litu'minu billahi wa rasuli da you may believe in Allah and his apostle وَتُعَزِّرُوهُ وَتُوَكِّرُوهُ وَتُسَبِّحُوهُ بُكْرَةً وَأَصِيلًا that you may believe in Allah and his apostle and you may honor and venerate him and that you may declare his glory morning and evening scholars of tafsir for example imam qurtubi they exposed two opinions regarding this noble verse A group said watuaziruhu watuwakiruhu that is you may honor and revere and venerate him they said it refers to the noble prophet why other group said no it refers to Allah the fact is that both opinions are right both in terms of the construction of this verse and even in terms of supporting evidences outside outside the verse itself here our resolution is that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala according to this verse instructs us to honor and venerate the noble prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam some are quick to say to honor and to venerate the prophet is to follow his sunnah the point is this we need to remind ourselves that the order the order to follow the sunnah of the prophet is repetitive in the quran and uh, and that that is different that is entirely different from honoring and venerating him question can muslims gather together in the name of the prophet to celebrate him yes Imam An-Nasahi in his Sunan this hadith is classified authentic Imam An-Nasahi it documents the hadith of Abu Said Al-Khudri 
radiyallahu anhu He said qala rasul qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wasallam um no he was actually reporting uh an abi sa'id al khudri qala qala muhawiyatu inna rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam kharaja ala halqa yani min hasahabihi faqala ma ajlasakum qalu jalasna nadhu allah wa nahmaduhu ala ma adana li dinihi wa manna alayna bik allahu akbar what a beautiful hadith the messenger of allah went out to isaku some sahaba they gathered themselves they actually they were doing something prophet now went out to go and meet them he now asked them what are you doing why did you gather yourself here what are you doing they said we have come together to pray to allah and to praise him for guiding us to his religion that is number 1 and allahu akbar wa manna alayna bik we also gather ourselves to thank allah to praise allah to guide, I mean, to, to, to 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 thank allah for blessing us with you allahu akbar what was the response of the prophet prophet now asks them is that the only reason you gather yourself they said wallahi we have not come together for any other reason we have not come together for any other reason the holy prophet now said i am not asking you to swear to an oath because inama atani jibril alayhi salam fa akhbarani anna allah azza wa jalla yubahi bikum al malaika allahu akbar prophet said I am not asking you to swear to an oath because of any suspicion rather jibril just came to me and told me that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is boasting is proud of you in front of his angels allahu akbar this are sahaba who follow the verse remember we quoted the verse for us that laqad manna allah على المؤمنين اذا باس فيهم رسولا من انفسهم that the prophet was a benefit the prophet is a benefit and the prophet will continue to be benefit so this are sahaba who follow that verse and they recognize that verse therefore they gather themselves together to pray and to thank allah for guiding them into islam that is one and wa manna alayna bik that is wa manna alayna bi muhammad that is for blessing us with muhammad that is the reason they gather themselves to praise allah this hadith is enough to prove the validity of maulid in nabi celebration that we can gather ourselves in the name of muhammad to praise allah for gifting us muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wasallam what else do the antagonists what do they want what else do they want in conclusion one we agree that according to the quran prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wasallam was is and will continue to be favored and grace and mercy of allah we all agree this two allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed the believers that wa amma bi ni'mati rabbika fa hadis announce allah's favor the favor that allah has done to you announce it and in surah al yunus verse 58 allah even instruct rejoice celebrate the favor that allah has done to you and number 3 we also established that to introduce good deed to introduce good sunnah into islam 
which people follow is praiseworthy and it is rewardable according to the Quran and Hadith of the Prophet. Therefore, celebrating Maulid in Nabi is a favor. It is a favor we need to announce. It is a favor we need to rejoice. It is a good sunnah that we need to emulate those who established it. Insha'Allah, I'm going to end this with something remarkable. It is called Unity Week. Unity Week. The Sunni Muslims in Iran, the Sunni Muslims in Iran, they used to celebrate Mawlid in Nabi on the 12th of Rabi ul Awwal. Why their Shia countrymen used to celebrate uh, Mawlid in Nabi on the 17th of the same month? Just five days apart. This actually makes the Iranian authority under the instruction and guide of the Supreme Leader to declare that week from 12th to 17th, to declare it a unity week among the Muslims. And in the days of this week, scholars of different school of thoughts all across the Muslim world are usually invited to Iran to rejoice and especially to ponder over the affairs of the Muslim world where they try to prefer solutions to Muslim problems and uh, 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 and look for ways to strengthen Muslim world's fraternity. What better avenue? What better avenue could bring this other than in the name of the Holy Prophet Muhammad? What does Quran says? وَاَتَسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا وَاتْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذُ كُنْتُمْ عَدَاهًا Allahu Akbar. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, the only Prophet Muhammad is the rope, is the pivot that Allah instructed us to hold fast unto so that we do not disunite. And remember the favor of Allah. This is Muhammad. Is the Muhammad is a favor of Allah. Allah said, remember, id kuru. Remember the favor of Allah when you were enemies before. Today, the Muslim world, we are enemies. Why can't we use the Holy Prophet Muhammad as the rope, as the pivot in which we all cling to? Why can't we remember the Holy Prophet Muhammad as the favor which Allah asks us to remember? So, therefore, my brothers and sisters, to celebrate Mawlid in Nabi, there is absolutely nothing wrong in it. We should remember the Prophet. We should proclaim the Prophet. We should announce the Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. We should celebrate the Prophet. These are clear arguments. Wa akhiru dawana anil amdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.